prime and composite numbers. We're going to talk about a way that you can classify whole numbers. Before we do that, though, let's talk about an array. Um, we're going to assume that I give you these five uh, square tiles here, and I'm going to ask you to put them in an array and figure out all the different arrays that you can make with five tiles. So we have to know what an array means. An array is an arrangement of objects in rows and columns. And here's an example of 12 uh, square tiles placed in columns going up and down and rows going horizontally, vertically and horizontally. So if I give you five tiles, you can arrange those five tiles in two different arrays or really just rectangles. You can make one long one that we would say is a one by five rectangle or array. And you can make the same rectangle by rotating it and you have a five by one uh, rectangle or array. Notice that they're the same shape, it's the same arrangement, just rotated. Down here, if I give you six on the other hand, you can do the one by six, the long array or rectangle, and the six by one, but there's another option to arrange it in, in columns and rows. You can do two by three or three by two. And this is the, the um, difference between prime and composite numbers. Prime numbers have just one pair of arrangements, one basic way to arrange it, um, the, the number. You can arrange five in one by five or five by one. Really, it's one pair, one array. Um, for six, though, there are two different ways you can arrange six. You can put it in the one by six or the two by three. There are more, there's more than one pair, more than one way to arrange six, so we call the six a composite number. So let's uh, go in, into depth in that and give the exact definitions. First, when we want to talk about prime and composite numbers, you're going to see both of those definitions have the word factor in them. So we have to make sure we know what a factor means. A factor is a number multiplied by another number to find a product. In other words, the two numbers that you multiply together in a multiplication problem to get the answer. So in two, by th two times three equals six, two and three are the factors, six is the product or the answer to a multiplication problem. So a prime number, is a number that has exactly two different factors, and those two factors have to be one and the number itself. So let's look at two examples. The number seven, the only way you could arrange seven in a rectangle or in an array is one by seven or seven by one. The only factors or the numbers you can multiply together to get seven are one and seven. One times seven is seven, seven times one is seven, there's no other way I can multiply two numbers together to get seven. It must be a prime number. Here's a bigger prime number, 31. I can't think of any multiplication fact that's going to give me 31 as the answer. Two times any, two times something, three times something, four times something, nothing multiplied together is going to give me 31 except for the num one and the number itself. One times 31, so that makes 31 a prime number. On the other hand, a composite number is a number that has more than two different factors. Remember, a prime number has exactly two, a composite number has more than two. So let's look at 12 for an example. We can do one times 12, but I, it equals 12, two times six equals 12, and also three times four equals 12. Because there are more than two factors here, 12 actually has six factors, that makes it a composite number. This shows that also we could, if we had 12 square tiles, we could arrange it in three different ways. One, two, three, three pairs of factors. 15 is also a composite number because one times 15 is 15, but there's another way to make 15, to get 15 as a product. Three times five equals 15. But we have one lonely guy here. One is a very lonely number because he is not prime nor composite. And let's see why that makes sense. Um, he definitely doesn't have more than two different factors. The only way to get one is one times one. But for a prime number, the definition, a lot of, so a lot of people would think two, one must be a prime number. But let's look again at the, at the definition. It has to have exactly two different factors. Really, the only factor in one of one is one, and they're not two different numbers. So one is not called neither a prime number nor a composite number. It's just neither. And, of course, I have a song for everything. So I have a song about prime numbers. And 
you have to excuse the grammar. I know it's not exactly right. It's after this song. You might have to look it up on YouTube. Ask your parents um, about short people. Might sound a little familiar. So here goes. Prime number Scott. Nobody. Prime number Scott. Nobody. Prime number Scott. Nobody but one and themselves. They got nobody. Composite number Scott. Lots of factors. Composite number Scott. Lots of factors. Composite number Scott. Lots of factors like 12 and 8. Lots of factors. All right. So as we see, this is a way to help you remember that the prime numbers are the ones that only have one in themselves as the factors. Composite numbers, lots of factors. In case the song's not doing it for you, I try to give you another way to remember everything. So here's a, a mnemonic device that might help you. Um, a prime number, you can think about the P and prime. Prime numbers are picky people, and they just like to hang out with one and themselves. So they're picky. Composite numbers sounds a lot like company, and they want to be in the company of lots of other numbers, lots of other factors. So this might help you remember prime, picky, one and themselves, composite, hang out with lots of company, other factors. So let's do two quick examples. Gotta get my marker. Let's do two quick examples of where you might have to use what you know about prime and composite numbers to solve a problem. You're given this bu um, big bubble of numbers and you're asked to identify the four prime numbers. So I'm gonna immediately think to myself, prime numbers got nobody but one and themselves. So I'm gonna immediately think, what am I looking for? All right, so I'm looking for something with just two factors. Ah, oh, should start with the easiest numbers, right? Here's one, this number two. The only way to make two is one times two. It's gotta be prime, so I'm gonna circle it. There's another easy one. The only way to make five is one times five. It's a prime number. All right, now I've gotta look a little harder. Let's see, oh, look at 21. Does that remind you of multiplication fact? It does for me. Three times seven is 21, so that means it has more than just those two factors. That can't be it. Hmm, let's see. I see lots of numbers here that are divisible by three. Three is a factor of them. Three is a factor of 63, because I could divide into it and see it goes in. Three times 21 is, is 63, so that is not a prime number. Oh, here's another one that's divisible by three. One and three. Three times 13 is 39, so that's not a prime number. All right, I have to think about 17. I can't think of any two is, doesn't go into it, three doesn't go, four, five. Nope, there's nothing. I can't think of any multiplication fact that um, gives me 17 as the answer, so that's got to be a prime number. And then I'm going to think about 29. 29, let me think. I can't think of anything for 29, so I'm going to put a possible around that one and then go back and prove that these other two are composite. Now, 51, I know it's not 2, I know it's not 4, 5, but I'm going to try 3 because I'm not really sure. And later I'm going to teach you a trick to know for sure that's easier than just division. But let's try it. 1, oh, 3 times 17 is 51. So that's not a prime number, that's a composite number. And let's do 3 over here too. Actually, I can use what I got here, look. 51 plus 3 is going to be 54, plus 3 more is 57. I already know 3 times 19 is going to give me 57. That doesn't work. So we were right over here. 29 is, in fact, a prime number. So we've got our 1, 2, 3, 4 prime numbers. Awesome. Down here, which list contains only numbers that are prime? Only prime numbers. All right. So... I, I can eliminate answers by finding some composite numbers, right? Oh, here's a composite number. 3 times 3 gives me 9, so that list is out. That one's looking pretty good. Let me, oh, wait a minute. 1 is not a prime number. I almost forgot. So that doesn't work. 1's neither, right? Um, two, oh, there's that composite number 9, so that's out. 1 times 2, 1 times 3, 1 times 5, 1 times 7, 1 times 11. That looks like it might be it. Awesome. There are no composite numbers in this list. 
And finally, I want you to watch out in the future. You will hear something in the next couple days, hopefully. You will hear something called the sieve of Eratosthenes. I think that's how we say it. We're going to say it. And um, we were going to use a hundreds chart and use what he figured out. He was a Greek mathematician. And we're going to use what he figured out to have a chart that helps us eliminate all of the composite numbers. So in our hundreds grid, we're left with only the prime numbers. It's going to be pretty cool, and you'll want to put it in your notebook to use all year long. Thank you.